Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today I want to make a video about the PSVR 2 seeing as we're getting pretty close to December now and a lot of the rumors revolving a potential reveal for PSVR 2 are based on some kind of December reveal so you know the hype for PSVR 2 is building and even if nothing happens in December surely 2022 is when we're going to see or hear something so with that in mind you know the hype levels are increasing as you can see behind me things are getting moist but in particular there is one thing i wanted to focus on with regards to the next generation virtual reality playstation headsets or whatever they're going to call this i'll probably just call it psv or two for the rest of the video and that is the price something that not too many people are talking about but it is something i wanted to go into and i think it's going to be something that might be a little bit divisive maybe well maybe divisive is not the right word but i have done polls in the past on twitter on youtube in regards to what people are kind of expecting the price to be and i got a lot like of varied answers so you know some people believe it should be one way and they give the reasons other people believe it should be you know at the other end of the spectrum and they give their reason of course not everyone's going to be happy with whatever the reality is but we'll get there when we get there so the first thing i just want to mention is that nobody knows how much this thing is going to be yes no nobody outside of sony and maybe even they don't know yes maybe they haven't finalized it yes so if you're watching this video in the hopes of finding out the official price of the psvr2 get out of here beat us you know hit the roll jack you're not welcome here but if you're still watching this video then maybe you're a little bit like me and you'd like to see this kind of topic being approached from maybe a logical point of view or what i consider logical to my mind could be completely different to reality so while i'm talking about this topic i will be referencing some leaked information about the psvr2 and talking about them as if they are fact now, some of these leaks came from psvr without parole which I consider to be trustworthy source. I feel like they probably have a rise, but because it's not confirmed, it's not official, and because anything can change, it's always, you know, never any harm to keep you know, a pinch of salt in your pocket when you're reading these things or watching these things or listening to these things or whatever. So I've broken this down into a few different areas that I think are probably the most important to look at when it comes to Sony considering and deciding what they're going to be charging for the PSV or two. And these are the following. Cost of manufacture, taking a loss, peripherals, consumer expectations, and competition. First things first, the cost of manufacture. This one is fairly self-explanatory. It costs Sony X amount of dollars to make a PSV or two headset. And in an ideal world, at least from Sony's point of view, they'd like to be able to sell these headsets at a price that will allow them to, at the very least, cover the cost of manufacture or more ideally make a profit on each one sold based on the rumors we've seen so far we know that the psvr2 is going to have a 4k resolution screen among many other bells and whistles however cannot even begin to imagine how much all these things cost when they're put together for sony we can look back to the psvr1 launch in 2016 it launched for 399 dollars with just the headsets, the despised breakout box, and about 48 different cables. We also know that the PSVR, like the PSVR 2, doesn't have any processing power going on in the headset itself because it uses the console for that. That means no need to be purchasing, you know, RAM and graphic cards and mobile processing chips and memory card readers and all that kind of stuff that those quest nerds have to worry about over there in quest land with Mark Zucker. taking a loss sony didn't actually take a loss on psvr1 headsets which surprised many considering it undercuts a loss of the competition on pc viewer by a considerable margin but we have also seen sony being willing to take a hit on the price of a unit sold and instead then aim to make the money back on software releases further down the line. They did this with the PS2 and even more recently with the PS5. Now how much of a loss they'd be willing to take is another question, but what this does tell us is that even if the PSVR 2 costs Sony more to produce than the PSVR 1 did, it may not necessarily cost us, the consumers, more if Sony are willing to take a hit. If they're really serious about getting virtual reality mainstream, then maybe it would be a wise sacrifice for them to make in the short term for the potential long-term gains. But there is another piece of the puzzle here that I have not talked about yet, peripherals. 
If we look at the PSVR 2 leaks, we can see that Sony are planning on bundling two new motion controllers with every single PSVR 2 headset. Now this adds a bit of a twist in the tale. Sony have officially revealed these controllers already, although without an official name, people have taken to call on them the Orb controllers based on their shape, but it's not just their shape that's interesting. They're packed with DualSense technology including haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, they have the sensor rings for tracking, they even have finger tracking capabilities plus your standard sticks and buttons. If it's true that every PSVR 2 headset is going to come bundled with two of these bad boys, then it may indeed point to the PSVR 2 costing more than the PSVR 1. However, as you and I both know, the 399 price tag on the PSVR 1 isn't entirely honest. Yes, you could buy the headset for 399 that's true, but it was pretty useless to you without the PS camera peripheral that it relied on for its tracking system. Then you had the move controllers, and while there were plenty of games that could function without them, you were going to be missing out on a lot of what the PSVR 1 had to offer without the moves. With all that in mind, the 399 became closer to something like 550 by the time you had all that gear ready to go. So if you do see the PSVR 2 launching at a price point of something like, say, $4.99, then it might be worth keeping in mind that, you know, you're not going to have to buy a camera with that, and you will probably be getting two very nifty new motion controllers, top-of-the-line stuff. But Sony may still need to be very careful with a price like $4.99, because that might not be in line with consumer expectations. It's hard to believe, but there are people out there who see virtual reality as just a gimmick. Even though Sony are going into a second generation of us, and the Quest has been seeing some impressive success. Fact remains that you'll need a PS5 to run a PS Viewer 2, so in some people's minds, the price of a PS5 will be in consideration as well. So a price like 499 which is the price of the disc version of a PS5 right now, could scare away a lot of people. The PS Viewer 1 set down a marker for what people would be willing to spend for some high quality virtual reality content. And while the PS Viewer did only sell around 5 million units, it did have other shortcomings that the PS Viewer 2 presumably will not have. And that brings us to our final factor. Competition. competition. Sony is no stranger to competition in the gaming space, having done battle with Nintendo, Sega and Xbox for decades, but virtual reality is different. PSVR 1 quickly became the VR market leader, which surprised Sony and made them uncomfortable. But as the years rolled on, PC VR fell off and the standalone Oculus Quest and Quest 2 rose up. So does that make the Quest Sony's biggest competition in the VR gaming space? Yes and no. PSVR 2 is going to offer high-end VR gaming by being attached to a PS5, whereas the Quest has found success by freeing itself from the PC and becoming a standalone platform. It'd be like comparing a PS2 to a Nintendo DS. Of course, a new Quest is likely to arrive and be more powerful than the Quest 2, but it's still not expected to compete with the PSVR 2 on that level. But that does not mean Sony can ignore them. The Quest is funded by Facebook or Meta, whatever you want to call them, and they've been making big plays in the VR space, acquiring prestigious developers like Ready at Dawn and buying the rights to VR ports of iconic titles like Resident Evil 4 and GTA San Andreas, and those have been turning heads. And with a price point of $2.99, it might make it difficult for Sony to go too far from that without risking being overlooked for something more affordable. So those are the five factors that I think are important to Sony when they're deciding on the price of the PSVR 2. Now, we didn't come up with a number, but hopefully maybe we came up with a realistic price range or at the very least, a better understanding so that when we do see the official price revealed, we'd be like, okay, it costs this, but we don't have to get the camera, it's gonna have the controllers or X, Y, Z, whatever. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Maybe I was way off, maybe I left out a key factor that you know about and I don't. The comments are the place to let me know. And that is the end of this video. Before I go, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. They are tradition. Pete Hawkins, Crum, and Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid. Thank you very much for them top tier Patreon supporters for their generosity. It is very much appreciated. If you'd like to help out on the Patreon, the link will be in the description. If not, like, comment, share. The usual YouTube and shice would be 
very much appreciated. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out, Decepticon.com, link in the description also. And with that, I will end this video. Please stay behind me. See what it says? Stay moist. You know, it's difficult with a green screen. It's like, it's like, the, it's like a mirror. You know, I go this way, it's actually that way. You know, goodbye. Petrifying punk.